Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. Well, as you know, my sister asked me, uh, when should I get my vaccines? And I said, just as soon as possible. And I suggested that she get all three at once. And so I took my own advice and I did that. And I did that. And, and, I, I, and I will tell you right now, they had no effect on me. Whatsoever. whatsoever. I only missed one day at work. <laughs> My new recommendation is maybe do the coronavirus, do the, the COVID vaccine on a different day from the flu and RSV. I mean, it just, I, I had a tough day. Anyway, good news. Lots of good things happening. Uh, there were some signs of improvement with uh, COVID. Uh, mostly deaths have substantially uh, been reduced over the last several months. Uh, it's still a high risk for patients over the age of 65, particularly if they have uh, COVID, uh, comorbid conditions. But the inc there's been an increase in Paxlovid uh, use, and probably that has something to do with the fact that mortality has gone down. Because there's, pretty, there's very good evidence that Paxlovid is actually very useful for people with uh, comorbid conditions. Uh, in addition to that, um, while most of the deaths occur in the hospital setting, for patients who have COVID complications. It's increasingly being seen now in, how, in, in ho households, in patients in hospice or nursing homes. So it looks like we're sort of moving more towards what uh, like the flu season is. So we, people aren't always going to the hospital. They, they, get their, uh, they get infected sometimes in other places and the mortality is sort of being distributed around. And again, vaccines continue to show a great effectiveness uh, reduce the risk of dying in all age groups, uh, and the most protection is observed in patients or in people who have had more than two boosters. So, again, plenty of evidence that the vaccines work, the boosters are effective, and the m mortality is reduced in people who have had uh, two doses of booster. So, get your boosters. Now, if you look at the uh, respiratory uh, virus tracking in the United States, this is what it looks like. You can see we're beginning to see the increase in cases. All of this is in that red line is COVID. So early on in the fall, most of the respiratory uh, uh, diseases that are leading to hospitalizations are due to COVID, RSV, and flu will soon be available <laughs> at your drugstore, local, at your local drugstore. Anyway, if you look at um, hospitalizations uh, in general, they went down last week by about 3%. And one of the interesting leading indicators is that uh, the number of people coming to the emergency room with COVID dropped by 12%. So that's kind of a leading indicator, whereas mortality is a lagging indicator. And if you look at hospitalizations uh, across the United States, this is just a county map where brown shows a lot of, uh, like greater than 20 hospitalizations per 100,000. Yellow is moderate and green is uh, considered low. You can see last or a couple weeks ago, the Southeast had a lot more and that seems to have disappeared. And now it looks like more in the upper, uh, upper Midwest and Northwest. So again, it's gonna crop up based on a lot of factors. You know, how many people are vaccinated, what the risks are in, that, in the region. If you look at wastewater, it was down in the mid 30% and now is back up to 47% that are reporting either 100% or greater than 100% increase. And the Biobot data, again, this is the company that uh, takes the CDC data. And you can see we had this really good news that it was dropping, seems to have plateaued. And my guess is we'll begin to see uh, a slight increase uh, as we go into the later fall. Houston's doing great. Houston's down from last week was 166% of the amount of virus in July 2020. It's down to 152%. You see mostly green arrows going down. So the virus, viral burden in the wastewater of Houston is dropping, which is, which is great. Um, if you look at what are the variants, it hasn't changed a lot except for one. So EG5 continues to be the main variant, but HV1 has emerged as a, as a new pretty strong variant. And if you look at the relatedness tree, it's pretty obvious why. HV1 is a direct descendant of EG5. So they're related, just a few amino acids different. And you can see all of the four major, five major variants are all related to XBB. They all come off the XBB tree. tree. The vaccine, of course, is to XBB 1.5, so it's not an exact match, but it's close enough. I'm sure it'll be effective. I certainly got an immune response. My arm's killing me. So it, it, it's, uh, get your, get your uh, booster. So this was a really interesting study. We talked about it last week. 
Uh, the increase in hospitalizations really is high in over the age of 75, but also under the age of six months. And, you know, they're not eligible. If you think about the recommendations by the CDC, it's six months and older, everyone is eligible for a booster. But in that, we haven't done the studies in very young kids, and they generally don't respond anyway. Their immune systems aren't really ready to, to be vaccinated. So what do you do? And you can see the hospitalization surge in two groups, 70 over the age of 75 and under the age of six months. So there was a really good study that came out of the MMWR, uh, which is a CDC publication, showing that in, in mothers who got vaccinated uh, during pregnancy, there was a marked reduction in hospitalization of infants related to uh, uh, COVID. So it was a reduction of 35% in infants under the age of six months and a uh, reduction by 54% under the age of three months. And that's because when mothers are vaccinated, when they uh, deliver their child, antibodies are given to the baby passively through breast milk feeding and that's protective. So there was also no increase in untoward uh, complications with women who were vaccinated during pregnancy. So if you're pregnant, you're, the smartest thing is to get vaccinated uh, against the COVID-19 while you're uh, pregnant, and that will protect your baby for the first six months of life until they're eligible for vaccination. And then there was another interesting study sort of looking at a large group, over almost 7,000 people, in terms of did Paxlovid actually help them? And it, treatment was associated, Paxlovid treatment was associated with lower risk of death or hospitalization in elderly people, particularly those that had immune uh, compromise. They had other comorbid conditions. What's kind of interesting is it really was not as effective in the younger age group. Uh, and it was really mostly in older people with immune compromise. So, uh, you know, Paxlovid worked pretty well for that group. It surprisingly didn't, you know, it's not really indicated for people younger than 65 now. So that's, uh, that was sort of an interesting retrospective study. Let's talk about flu. Flu is, you know, yellow uh, to orange is hot spots. It's beginning to be present. There's New Mexico, uh, Alabama, but New York City, <laughs> Janet, Flu has arrived in New York City, so there's going to be a lot of flu. Everybody should be getting their flu vaccine, we hope. Uh, and the good news is if you look at what is coming, you can see the, the slight bump. It's beginning of flu season now. The main variants are 94% uh, of influenza A is H1N1, which is in the vaccine, and 100% of influenza B is the Victoria strain, uh, which is also in the vaccine. So the vaccine should be a very good match this year based on what's circulating Interestingly enough, again, there's no Yamagata strain in influenza B, which is interesting to those of us who look at evolution of viruses. As far as RSV, RSV is usually a late summer, early fall disease. These are two, uh, you can see the, the um, peak in previous years. This green here is the current year, and we're just beginning to see a slight increase in RSV. So I want to end today with a couple of things. Uh, first of all, the Nobel Prize was awarded based on the, all these vaccines to the, the inventors of the uh, mRNA vaccine. It was uh, Catalin Carrico and uh, Drew Weissman. Uh, you know, for those of you who think, you know, was all these were all developed very, very rapidly, their work was based, really started in the late 1990s. And um, they, uh, they were the first people really to show that mRNA could be used as a therapeutic uh, they were able to alter the RNA so that it was not degraded and also was uh, stimulated an immune response. Previously, they won the Lasker Award, which is sort of the pre-Nobel Prize Award, and also the uh, Life Sciences Breakthrough Prize, which we talked about last week. And then today, or this week, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to three scientists for the discovery and synthesis of quantum dots. Now, quantum dots have a lot of medical applications, but the most important thing to you personally is your flat screen LCD. The reason you're getting really good whites and really great colors for football is these guys. So it seemed like a kind of strange Nobel Prize, but you know, what are you going to do? I, I look at my LCD flat screen, I'm thrilled. Thank God for those guys. And I want to end today with a couple of shout outs. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Peter Hotez and Maria Elena Botazzi. Just another award. Uh, this time they received the 2023 David and Beatrix Hamburg Award for advances in biomedical research and clinical medicine for developing their safe, effective, and inexpensive vaccine that is being used all around the world. Uh, today is also October 10th is Ombuds Day. 
Uh, ombuds folks uh, help uh, corporate entities deal with complaints and problems in the workplace. Uh, they, they are going to have an open house uh, in Conference D in, in the McNair campus so you can learn about conflict management, get useful information tips, so they also are going to have snacks. The Astros have done it. The Astros have done it again in 2023. The kings of the American League West. And then finally, of course, uh, it's the Astros playoff time. And you know, we, we at a health sciences education center, we do not allow the hoopla around professional sports to really get in the way of our seriousness. Uh, you know, but it is an uh, opportunity today, Friday, uh, to show your spirit for the Astros. So get your Astros garb and come on on and celebrate another victory for our Astros. So have a great weekend. Can't wait to see you next week. in Altuve out and sliding. Whoa, look at Altuve.